All right, this video is going to go over how to create a listing uh, in your RMS portal. Uh, this is going to be done manually or one by one. Uh, you're going to want to first go to your uh, seller portal login. I will include the link for this login page in the description. Uh, so let me go ahead and log in real quick. Once you're on the home page, you're going to want to click the list create a product link at the top. And what this is going to do, this will either create a new product if your product does not exist, or what I would recommend doing first before you give us all the product information is to check if the product already exists in our marketplace. If it does, you can simply just list it, and that way you don't have to give us all the product information because we already have it. Uh, you can search uh, if we are if we have the product listed in our catalog a variety of different ways. You can do it by UPC, manufacturer name manufacturer part number or title. Uh, I have a UPC ready to go here. So if I had this product and I was going to create it, I'd first want to check and see if it already existed. So let's type in the UPC, hit search, and you'll see a uh, result pop up. And it's going to be a pair of shoes from Michael Antonio. I'm going to want to verify the information's correct, uh, as I would suggest you should do for every type of product that has any sort of attributes so like clothing or shoes or anything like that so if it, I want to make sure okay I have the size 8.5 black uh, shoe and you can hover over the picture and you'll see okay this UPC is connected to a black um, 8.5 shoe so let's go ahead and create the listing um, this is going to be the, list, the listing information you're going to want to find out um, or rather tell us if it's brand new or refurbed a lot of this is pretty uh, self-explanatory except for these two fields, reference ID and map type. Uh, reference ID is going to be the alphanumeric string that you will receive when you get the order to know what to ship out. So whatever you have to type in this box to let yourself know, hey, ship out this shoe, that's what you're going to put in the reference ID field. The map and map type, uh, generally if you, if you already know what map and map type is, um, you would fill this out if you have map agreements. If you do not have map agreements or you don't know what map is, just leave this blank. This will cause a lot of confusion with you and customers um, that may not need to be there. This comment section is not product description. It's more of like uh, you know new in box or open in box or manufacture refurbed. So you're not going to put any sort of product description information in here. Uh, if you want to include expedited shipping, you can click the yes button and a box will pop up. If you don't, you can just hit no and just use your standard rate. You can also search based off of the manufacturer name. So if I wanted to search Michael Antonio to see if um, my product existed, this is kind of a broad search, so this might not be the best, but it's available to you if you want. Um, again, I'd make sure that you're going to be listing the right product. Let's say I had um, a size six and a half shoe. I'd want to verify that I'm selecting the right, the right size. So the black six and a half is this one right here, I think. Yep. So I'd create this listing, and I'm good to go. Uh, if you search your UPC, like I'm going to do right now, and I say, "Oh, does this one exist?" Nothing comes up. So that means it's not in our system. So I'd have to create this manually. Um, if you want to do a bulk upload, um, that's a different process. You're going to be using feeds. Um, there I have videos going over that. You can check the channel or email us um, for the links. Um, but here we go. I'm going to click New Product, Create New Product. And you're going to want to first select your department where the product is going to be created. I, in my example, I'm going to be creating a little stuffed animal. So mine's going to be under Toys. Um, if, if you're not doing toys in, for your product, that's fine. This process is the same across all categories. Um, this search box right here, this is to search for um, the uh, category ID names. So if I have stuffed animal, I can simply type in stuffed animal to see what pops up. And it'll show you all of our category IDs um, under stuffed animals. I have the one on the bottom here, stuffed animals and toys. So I would select that. And that category ID, um, that's where it's going to get created. If you can't find your category ID from the search bar, you can always just drill down using our browse function. So you're going to want to find the correct parent category. Mine's going to be here, dolls and stuffed animals. You want to click the blue hyperlink 
and you'll see um, things show up on the on the right side here. So here's all the categories. Let's find ours. Okay, right here. Stuffed animals and toys. Select that, and this tab is done. So now you want to go to the core information tab. So you're just basically telling our system all the product information so we can create it uh, in our catalog. The manufacturer name, I got this at a event I went to. Um, Riot Games is the manufacturer. Manufacturer part number, we're going to call it Poro. Um, it's white and blue, so we'll go Poro WB large. UPC. Uh, if your products have a UPC, you need to put it here. If your products do not have a UPC and you, and you need an exemption, please email us for the uh, UPC exemption questionnaire. Um, in my example, I gave myself a UPC exemption because um, I don't have one for this product. Shop owner SKU, this is your seller SKU, merchant SKU. Um, it's known by a lot of different um, names, but shop owner SKU is simply the seller SKU. So I'm going to use the seller SKU the same as the uh, manufacturer part number. I mean, title's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we'll call it League of, League of Legends Poro Plushie. MSRP, this is not going to be what you're selling the product for. This is simply the retail price or manufacturer um, suggested retail price. So we're going to, I think I bought it for $59 and the weight is three pounds. Description, I'm going to do a quick one because I don't want to spend too much time, but it needs to be one block of text. There's no, there's no line breaks. There's no HTML. It's just simply um, one paragraph um, of an item description. Awesome plushie. Uh, the features you're going to want to do line by line. Um, so I'm going to just do quick ones here. Awesome, cool, fluffy. Uh, you kind of get the idea. Each line is going to be its own bullet point. And then once all this uh, core information is filled out, you want to go to the addition, um, Images tab. Now you can either upload an image from your computer hard drive or use a link. So I have a link. I, up, I took a picture on my phone and uploaded it to PhotoBucket. And I'm going to use one picture from PhotoBucket. And you'll see it pop up here. There it is. And I'm going to upload one image from my computer. Photo 2. And sometimes, um, if you if if you keep seeing this, please wait uploading image. Um, wait. Sometimes it might time out. Um, either try and create the product again, or email us with screenshots um, of, of what's going on, of what's happening with your with your problem. And you'll see my two pictures here. You can add um, up to five, so a main image and four additional. Um, unfortunately, you can't do any more than that right now. So it's one main, and then four additional. Once your product or your pictures are done, you can go to the attributes, and depending on what category you're listing in, you'll you'll need different so attributes. Blog, you? I think. Um, sorry about that. Um, and for this category, its age range is required. So you'll see it in red text if the category um, ID requires that attribute. So it looks like I only have one here. So this is pretty much, um, let's see, anywhere from, let's say, 8 to 11 and onwards. So we'll just select these. You can select multiple or only one. It's up to you. You can also select the other ones if you want, um, but they're not required. So I think there's like, uh, if, you're, if it was themed, you know, character series theme, you can do that. I think there's a waterproof. So you can kind of browse and see. You can you can fill out what you want, but generally if you, you can you can only do the the required ones if you want. This product set would mean if there are similar products with different colors, you'd want to group them together. You would need to use the same product set ID per product. So if I wanted to group a blue one with a black one, I would need to name I would need to use the same code to group it. So I'd do Poro 1, and then when I create the other product, I'd also need to do Poro 1. 
If you're going to be doing product sets, I would highly suggest to do feeds because it's way easier to um, look at your data and um, if you wanted to group products together after you create them manually, you have to do the feed anyway. So if you want to make um, product variations and you want to group them together, I would highly suggest stopping now and then do the feed process. And once you finish with all the attributes, you're going to want to do a product listing. And this is simply the uh, listing information. So mine's brand new, and this is where going to be your selling price. I'm going to do it for $49.99. I have, actually, I'm going to do it for a lot of money because I don't want it to be sold in the time this video is being uploaded. Uh, quantity available, I have 15. Reference ID, remember, this is going to be the uh, alphanumeric string I get when I get an order. So whatever I need to put here to know to ship this item, I need to put in this reference ID field. I'll be using my um, seller SKU or manufacturer part number. Put that there. There's no map. It ships from the United States. And I live in California. Comments. Uh, I'm going to put, you know, unboxed, new, unboxed, still in plastic wrap. Shipping options, um, I'll do free shipping and no expedited shipping. Or if you wanted to charge shipping, you could just put whatever whatever number you wanted to put in there. And hit submit your product. But before I do that, I want to mess something up. So if you get an error, you can kind of see um, how to fix it. So I took something out, I'm going to submit my product, and I got an error. So what you're going to want to do is click on the core information tab. Uh, or whatever the error would be, there's going to be a little plus sign. You're going to want to click on that and it'll tell you what actually erred. In my example, if I go to core, it'll say the manufacturer part number cannot be empty. So let's correct that and put something in there and submit my product. Sometimes it'll take a little bit of time, but this will create the product and list it if you use this tool. If you use a feed, you're going to have to do the new SKU feed we have to process that feed, and after two hours you can list it with an inventory feed. This tool combines those, although you have to do it one by one, so it's, it's just a little different. Once it creates, um, you, can, you should be able to see it in your uh, RMS portal instantly, although it might not show up on the site for up to a day. So if I were to take this sh uh, Rakuten.com shopping SKU, I'll do it really quick right now, it probably in fact, I'm almost positive it won't show up because it takes a little bit of time for the for the site to index it. But if you go to your back to your homepage and click Manage Listings, and you just search, um, this will also take a little bit of time, um, up to a few minutes. There it is. It shows up right now. Um, I have 15 available, and you can um, see the price. And if you wanted to change the price or the quantity, you can do it manually right here. So if I said, oh, I don't have 15, I actually have 10, but I want to do, uh, sw switch the number and hit Save Listing Changes and hit Submit. And this will manually update your quantity. If you have any questions, feel free to email. I'll put the description uh, or the email in the description below. There's also a technical, su technical support link here. Um, you can click on this to email um, our tech team. Uh, thanks for watching, and please let us know if you have questions. Thank you.